It was quite a scene at designer Ralph Lauren's glittering 50th anniversary soiree not long ago. Celebrities and fashion industry bigwigs turned out in force. And again, it's a big anniversary for a very big name in fashion. I saw this as a land that I love. There's a sense of freedom. At the wheel of a rusty pickup truck that's seen a lot of unpaved roads, Ralph Lauren surveys his 20,000 acre Colorado spread. You see the brown wood and the sort of fade and the tin roofs, it's all part of the history. In a rustic cabin nestled in an open field, in the majestic mountain vistas, he found his muse, his inspiration. It's about showing people in America, or wherever I was, that this is beautiful. And for 50 years, that passion for timeless style, elegance, romance, has informed a distinct fashion sensibility. You can adjust it. Make some adjustments. Let's see it. I don't have to adjust it. Yes, you do. You're, you're no, good. you're being you're a good. gentleman. Honestly, fix it. Fix it? Yeah, All do right. it right. No, no, I don't do that. <laughs> He's outfitted the U.S. Olympic team since 2008 and dressed Nancy Reagan, Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, and Melania Trump. But growing up in the Bronx, Ralph Lauren did not foresee a future in fashion. My mother and father wanted me a doctor or a lawyer or something that was safe, a teacher. So I think I'm very lucky. I could have been the doorman. I could have been anybody. And I think about that all the time. You weren't preparing yourself for greatness. Oh, I, I, I prepared myself for greatness in my mind. I did what a lot of kids did, go to the movies on Saturday afternoons and come out thinking I'm dueling with my brother or my friends and think I'm Tarzan. So there was a lot of dreaming in the Bronx. You didn't know what you were gonna be. But what Ralph Lauren had, even as a kid, was an eye for style. What I love about this picture is, well, pretty much everything. I love, it's an outfit, it is confidence, and it also looks like a Ralph Lauren picture from your future. I thought I was cool. The sweater was my brother's, and I think a jacket was my other brother's. And I'm wearing my own Levi's at the time. When you were styling, and you were, you were styling with your brother's hand-me-downs, mm -hmm. And for someone who was going to be in your business, that thing that well, sparked, you saw it young. That's, that's true. But I didn't know, I never knew this was fashion. And yet, as a salesman in Manhattan's garment district in his early 20s, he had an epiphany about a menswear staple, the tie. It hadn't changed much in generations. Neckties were a very important product for men. They expressed their, their sensibility. They can't buy new suits, but they can change their ties. His tie was wider, bolder, pricier. And he called his brand Polo for a reason. Polo represented a lifestyle, and the people that played polo were international and very elegant. The success of polo ties begat menswear. I was exposing what I loved and what I liked by designing clothes that fit the man who didn't want to look too fashiony, who didn't want to look like he was a dandy. Ralph Lauren and Polo came to represent a world of luxury. Polo by Ralph Lauren. Whether rustic or refined, winning a lot of fans, and not a few critics. I do what I do. There are critics that love your clothes and critics that don't love your clothes. The ones that didn't love it so much, what were they saying? They didn't get it. But evidently, there must have been something I had to say, because 50 years in the fashion business that is a trendy, moving business is really hard to do that. And it's been a big year for Lauren. This fall, his golden anniversary runway show was the glamorous high point of New York's Fashion Week. He was recently named an honorary knight by Queen Elizabeth. He threw out the first pitch at Yankee Stadium in September. 
And with a company now worth more than $10 billion, Ralph Lauren is a bona fide global icon. But Ralph Lauren was not the name he was born with. Until the age of 19, he was known as Ralph Lifshitz. In, in the world I was growing up, the word sh was a tough word. It was in my name. So that name change was not about being Jewish or not Jewish or being something else. But for this designer, the name on the label isn't what matters most. When a woman walks in a room and she's wearing Ralph Lauren, it is not your aspiration for the room to say, well, I think she's wearing Ralph Lauren. I'm not about what I think is sometimes a fashion victim who has to wear a label to prove that she's got taste. If you enjoy something, I like that, because you're expressing who you are. And if you presumed Ralph Lauren would be wearing Ralph Lauren for our interview, the shirt? We'd have both been wrong. Well, this shirt I bought at Kmart. This is living proof of what I believe in. I love the aging of it. I love the rips. I love it all. And I you like the way I look at it. You didn't design it? I didn't design it. I assumed it was. No, I happen to like this because it's the one that I have memories of. And how come you chose it for this conversation today? I want to look great. And at 79, yes. he looks yes. pretty great. But for Ralph Lauren, fashion is not about how clothes make you look. It's about how they make you feel. I feel cooler now than ever. Why? How? Because I've enjoyed my, my career, and I'm still working really hard and well. 50 years and counting. So let's hope it goes on.